Welcome to All Things Media. Today we're going to be doing a tempo mapping tutorial inside of Pro Tools. Now, some bands don't like to record to a click track in order to maintain a natural flow of the song. So if you're one of those artists or bands, don't feel pressured into doing so because the engineer is telling you that it's the only way to make better edits. A click or tempo can always be done after the fact and you engineers out there should be able to do this. Remember, we are here to serve the song, not the engineer. This lesson we're about to go over is something all engineers should know how to do. Keep in mind, this is not just for drum tracks. In a different tutorial, I'll be showing you how to apply this method to an acoustic guitar for you singer-songwriters. So be sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Now I have this drum session here. It's got a pretty nice groove, but was not recorded using a click track. So we're going to map this to a tempo to tighten up the drums, and at the same time, it's going to give us greater flexibility if we need to edit any section of the song. All right, so I've worked on this track before, and I know it's right around 123 beats per minute. Let's go ahead and take a listen with the click track on. Not a bad performance, but as you heard, it varies in tempo from measure to measure. So we're gonna use the tab to transient for the first hit on the measure, and then shift plus tap to transient to create a perfect two measure loop. Next, we're gonna use the quick key command plus I to bring up the identify beat window. We want two full measures. We see here the measure starts at 10. We need to have this ending at measure 12. We've identified these two bars to be at 123.7485 beats per minute. So depending on what you're working on, you can grab one measure, two, three, or even four measures. Every project is going to be different, so don't be afraid to experiment. And we want to go down the line every two measures, doing exactly what we just did. Now we have a two measure loop using the shift plus tap to transient shortcut. And bring up the identified beat window again. We want two perfect measures. So the start location is going to be 12, and the end of the location should be a full two bars, so we'll input 14. Hit enter, and we can see now that these two measures are registering at 124.5109 beats per minute. Remember, for this session we're working two measures at a time. We're going to be doing this for the next two measures, repeating the same process, but we're going to start at bar 14 and ending at bar 16. Again, we have a different tempo for those two measures. Let's turn our click track on, hit the play button, and we're going to notice that the click track is going to follow the tempo of the drums. Beautiful. That's exactly what we're looking for. Now we're still going to tighten up these drums a bit, but this is a great starting point. It's doing exactly what we needed to do. I'm going to go ahead and do this for a few more measures. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn our click track on, hit the play button, and let's see what we've got so far. As you can see, every two bar has a different tempo, but it's locked onto our click very nicely. Let's move on to the second step of this tutorial. We're going to be using Elastic Audio to manipulate the tempo. And we want to make sure what we do to one track, we do it to all the tracks in this session. This would include any other tracks if you had them in your session, including vocals, guitars, bass, synth, you get the idea. I like to use the polyphonic mode for drums. Again, experiment with your session, see where it works best for you. And we're also going to change all these tracks to tick-based. By default, your recorded audio tracks will be sample-based. By changing this to tick-based, it's going to allow us to manipulate our tempo to whatever we desire. This is going to act like a rubber band, hence the name Elastic Audio. Now, if we need to move a section of the song to a different section, the measure is going to conform to the beats per minute, even though they were originally different tempos to begin with. This is the beautiful thing about working with tick bass as opposed to sample bass. Now I've got complete control over how fast or how slow these tracks are going to be played back.
All right, before we move on to the last step of this tutorial, let's go ahead and ungroup all our tracks. Next, we're gonna use Beat Detective to tighten up these drums. Let's go ahead and open up the Beat Detective window. Now we're gonna capture the area we wanna work with. Hit Analyze and raise up the sensitivity slider until we see the purple lines hitting our transients that we want to affect. Now we're only gonna be doing this with the bass drum and the snare track. Next, we're going to include the remaining tracks. Now on the Clip Separation tab, I'm going to set my trigger pad to 5 milliseconds and hit Separate. Move on down to Clip Conform, then Fill and Crossfade. Now these drums are sounding really tight, and since the tempos are still varying every two measures, it's keeping that natural human groove. Now if I wanted to lock these all to the same tempo, it's very easy to do. Don't try to click on the first marker to change the tempo, it's not going to work. If anyone else has figured out a way to do so, please let me know. Now the first marker has to be changed by hitting the plus sign. After that, you can double click on the markers and change the tempo that way. I'm going to change all these measures we've worked on to 123 beats per minute. And if we play this back, we're going to have the perfect performance. Now if you guys and gals are up for a challenge, I've included a link down below to download the stems to a drum session I'm about to play for you. Now these drums here are a little rough. But even these can be made to sound like they were played by the tightest drummer in the world. Let's take a listen. Shoot me an email at Danny at Wondertone Productions and let me know how things are going. I'd love to hear them. Thanks for watching and I hope you got something out of this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Tell me what you loved about this video, tell me what you hated about this video, and then tell me what you'd like to see in the future.